I've been pretty impressed with the images coming from the James Webb Space Telescope, as I'm sure many of you guys are, and it sparked me to build something that's been on my mind for a while, and that is an image to audio conversion, but I want to do it uniquely. I want to be able to take the color of the image and use that to generate the sound. There's a lot of stuff out there already that converts grayscale images into sound using X, Y, axes and amplitude, pitch and time. I want to actually get some information streams coming from the color and hopefully you guys can help me decide how we can convert that into sound. So I'm going to be building this from scratch and this will be taking up the next few videos. We're going to be doing some weird shit. I've got a bit of spare time and this sounds like a lot of fun. So all I've done is download this image and convert it into a square which is 255 by 255 pixels and that'll become apparent soon. So I'm just going to put this off to the side and let's start building. We're going to be using Max for Live of course and I'm going to use a Max MIDI effect because we may want to output MIDI information. So let's just open this up. First, what are we going to do? We're going to need to use a JIT.matrix. So a JIT.matrix contains a matrix of information, so good for images and videos, RGB values and alpha values. Um, we're going to do four separate channels, so that's RGB and alpha and we need to make it a certain size so i'm going to go 255 by 255 so that'll match up with the image that i've generated so that's our starting point there next we're going to need to display this so i'm going to make a jit.p window that's not what i want p window there we go and this is going to display the contents of what is in the matrix we haven't given the matrix any information yet but let's just make sure that this is 255 by 255 I picked the wrong one 255 by 2 very good and let's just connect this to that that's all good now we need to be able to read those images so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a drop file which allows me to drag and drop things from my browser I'm going to have to put a read we'll make that a message box read dollars one so when i drag and drop the, the file it should output read and then the file path so i'm just going to test that now i'm just dragging the image okay so there's the file path on my computer so that all works uh, i'm also going to need a bang though so we'll make a t and bang and a list so it's going to where did my shit go? Okay. We need to do this again. TBL. So the list is going to be fed into the matrix with the read prepend. And then we're just going to have to bang them. Ah, oh, we need to feed this into a JIT movie. So this will capture, even though it says movie, it'll capture the image. So this needs to go in here. Then we also need to bang it. That will output to the JIT matrix and we should get the image here okay let's give that a try perfect there's our thumbnail our clickbait thumbnail now let me just tidy this up a bit okay 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 so what's next I'm gonna have to scan through this matrix what I want to be able to do is just scan through every single pixel so the pixel values go from 0, 0 up to 255 to 255. I want to be able to scan through these and output the RGB values of each. So the way I'm going to do that, uh, I believe we can send a get cell message to the matrix. And we can send it an X and Y coordinate. So if I was to make a pack object, which packs two inputs together and we put in two integers like this for our X and our Y um, and we put that into get cell let me just test that works that the formatting is correct yeah so we can specify the X and Y here with this get cell so let's feed that across through the JIT matrix and let's print the output of the dump out when we send it one of those values and let's see what we get here
Okay, so that looks good. So it, what you can see is it's outputting cell and then which one it is, the X, Y, axis, and then it's giving us the value. So 255, that's the alpha channel. That'll remain 255 throughout all of this, I believe. What I'm interested in is these next three numbers, 17, 25, 36. So these are the RGB values of the exact pixel that we're specifying here. So what I'm going to do, just pre-planning here, is I'm going to put an unjoin. Um, how many values do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I'm going to put an unjoin 8. So that's going to split the output of this JIT matrix. Or well, it's going to split this list into its 8 elements, which means we'll be able to get the R, G, or the B, G, and R values here, here, and here. Okay, let's test that works. So, yeah, so we're getting the values there, which is good. Okay, now I need to think about how I want to scan through these. I'm going to I'm going to have to cycle through a system. I've got, I, I built something similar to this quite a few years ago, which was an image to MIDI note or MIDI clip generator. Um, I'm going to probably use a similar setup here. So we're going to need initially a metro. Um, let's make this super fast, say 10 milliseconds, and we'll put a toggle box there. So when I turn this on every 10 milliseconds, it's going to power out a bang out of this here, which is good. Um, in that case, we need to have a counter. So a counter. So every time it bangs, it's going to move up an increment. So if I was to output this here and turn it on, we're going to get up to 255. That's all good. We're going to have to put... So what I want it to do is I want it to get to 255 and then I want it to reset itself. Is it going to continuously recycle if I put 255? Okay it is, so that's handy. So what I can do is I can split this into two channels and I can put a select 255 here. So that means whenever the counter hits 255 it's going to send a bang here and I'm pretty sure that's what I want because then I can put a separate counter with 255 so the bangs going to slowly increment this one so this is me creating a scanning process so we can move across the axes here. So you see now we're on two, so this is going down. Now we're on the third level, fourth level, fifth level. Okay, let's turn this off. Let's just create a set zero just so we can reset everything. So that goes into the counter here, and this one goes into the counter here, and I'm just going to create a bang to set both of these to zero. Uh, to zero. I'm going a bit faster than usual today. I figured I've done quite a lot of Mac stuff at the moment, so uh, hopefully you guys are following along. If you're not, I'm, I'm happy to answer questions in the um, comments. And of course, if you know a better way of doing this stuff, let me know. So many ways to do this kind of thing. Okay, so now we should be up putting our... Hmm, which one is which? Well... In order for me to actually start generating RGB values, I'm going to have to create a new JIT matrix. I'm going to copy this one here. And I'm going to have to use a set cell. So as well as get cell, we can do set cell. Um, I just want to test this out. So I'm going to make this matrix 16 by 16. I'm going to send it a set cell uh, and then we need coordinates so I'm just going to do 0, 0 and then val and then let's just go 120, uh, 255, 127, 127, 127 that should give us a grey that should give us a grey box in the top left it is not giving us a grey box in the top left uh, let's make this a 
one. Oh, I need to bang it. Okay. So I need to send a bang after that. Okay, that's good. So I was just checking that this is the correct format in which to send this. So this is sent a value of 255, 127 red, RGB, green, blue, there, and then bang. Okay, that's all good. I'm going to turn that into a pack. So we've got set cell, and then the coordinates, and then val, and then the alpha RGB. So alpha needs to be 255, and then we'll just go 0, 0, 0. So there's our pack statement, and this will need to send a list and a bang. So we'll go BL, um, and these will both feed into this. So now we should be able to feed this. We should be able to feed this directly from this. Yeah, so we should be able to feed this the blue, green, and red. This is stretching my mind here, guys. And then we should also be able to feed it. That one's Val. This one. <laughs> that's 255, that's Val. This one. And this one for the XY coordinates. Then I should be able to connect this and this to this. <laughs> Make sure we update this to 255 to 255. Let's clear the matrix. And bang it. Let's set these to zero. And oh, I don't know if this is going to work. This is one of those moments. Let's click on the X. Okay, we've got something generated. We've got something happening here. Looks like I've got my RGB values screwed up. So we're scanning through the image and we're basically trying to replicate it in this. Oh, I think we I think we got it working. It's going quite slowly because this metro is going at 10 milliseconds. Look at that. I'm just curious as to why it chose to go why it chose to start in the middle so let's um turn that off let's make see how we can make this faster I have a feeling going too low will um screw up this process and we won't I mean if I try to make it one millisecond I don't think it'll work well we'll give it a try in a minute so we're gonna set these to zero and let's go okay so I also need to I also need to just, we'll just set these to zero as well when, when we bang. Set zero, clear, let's go. Look at that. Okay, let's try doing it super fast. One millisecond. I wonder if I can do metros at... Um... Oh, we've got something called a clocker. I'm not familiar with a clocker. Okay. Just wondering if we can do it faster than a millisecond. I mean, I could just feed the output of the counter back into the counter and um, I feel like that's a fairly dangerous and sloppy way to do it though okay let's have a look at one millisecond oh no we're working okay how cool is that let's bring this down here
I'm really I'm really happy with that. It's uh, it's quite rare that something I put together will just start working straight away. Um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm kind of like, what do I do now? Uh, I guess this video has been going on a bit. So what I'll do is um, the final thing I want to do is I want to create another chip matrix, another P window, and I'm going to hook that up there. I need to give this its values jit dot matrix. Uh, we'll make this four channels, but I'm going to make this just one by one pixel. And the reason for that is I want to be able to just get this changing based on whatever pixel it's currently scanning, just so we can have like a running color or a kind of a, an indicator of what color is currently being scanned. So we'll put in an, another pack with the three values. Uh, we'll just copy we'll just copy this actually and we can leave the zero 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 because this is a one by one matrix so this is currently zero zero should be able to just connect these up to here send it through Uh, we also need the bang. And the list. Oh. Okay, so this is just repeating itself now. So if I was to slow this right down, let's do a metro 100 milliseconds. So you can see we're getting a nice slow color feed now. So this op opens up lots of interesting opportunities to actually do stuff now with the numbers now image processing is not my area of expertise at all but there's no reason why we can't do weird stuff with these numbers you know so i mean i mean for for an example we could just go plus 64 on one of these channels let's some um, speed this up up a bit more I'll make it one millisecond again you know and you can see that we've kind of altered the image now we're kind of increasing the what are we increasing the blue value by 64 so we're basically raising it by 25 percent um we could go minus i mean we could uh what happens if i go minus 255 let's have a look so we've pretty much eradicated blue in fact if we put one of these on each channel we should just get a now nah, we freaked it out by doing that that's cool <laughs> um i mean what happens if we go times by negative one i'm just plucking stuff out i have no idea what i'm doing now but that's okay Yeah, that's not the right way to invert it. Oh, what we could do is we could go... I'm just trying to get the inverse. Um, we could do... Two, uh, take away... 255. And then the input comes in. So the, it comes in here, it sends it to the minus, and then it bangs 255. I don't know if this will work either, but this is quite fun. I think I've done something wrong over here. 
I think these need to be going into these. Look at that. So yeah, we've we've I guess we've reversed the color by doing that. Okay. So I'm curious to know what should we do next? We've got nice streams coming out of the RGMB. Uh, Matt from Elgonaut suggested that we convert convert it to HSL, so hue, saturation, and lightness. That's an option. I believe there is an RGB to yeah so we have an RGB to HSL thing here so I can feed that into this um, we'll need a jit dot iter and unpack this should work so that should give us our hue saturation and lightness so that's an option as well yeah I, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop and please let me know if you have any thoughts and in the next video I guess we'll pick this up and see if we can get this making some sound <laughs>